Hi, everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And we are continuing our top 50 games of all time, 2020. Yeah, so we are on numbers 30 through 21. If you want to go back and see our first two, our first, well, I guess our first 20, yeah. but our first two videos, and the very first one, the number is 50 through 41, kind of explains the parameters that we use yeah. and how we went about choosing our games and ranking them, which was super tough, by the way. It was. It's an <laughs> exercise that I think you should try if you haven't done it before. It's kind of fun. Even if it is really challenging and it, it makes you pitch your favorite games against each other. It's like or choosing like, your favorite child. <laughs> or like your most, your most mediocre games in front of each other. Like, yeah. Which one am I more just... lukewarm about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was difficult, but it was good. So I'm going to start with okay. my 30. My 30 was actually Ryan's 31, and that is Century Spice Road. I just really like this, um, what is it, like engine builder? Like the most basic of you start with the smallest thing as you build it up. Um, so you start with basic cards, and you try to build your cards up so you can get better cubes to buy um things and then those are points at the end and it's just like it's really fun and especially how it ramps up and how fast it is and if you've been watching our series um we played that right after we filmed the other one <laughs> like it popped into my head and i was like yeah we should play that now yeah no and it's really great <laughs> that's why it's my number 31 yeah. all right so my number 30 is gonna be higher on your list so i'm gonna just keep quiet for now yeah i can do like a funny thing i don't even i'm not I'm too tired to do like to do like puns and things. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, my number twenty nine was Ryan's forty nine, and this is Call to Adventure. This is so fun. This is a storytelling game that actually has good game mechanics to it, while still being very immersive in the story. So you're still you kind of get this character, and you have this. Um, objective that you're trying to maintain and you go on these quests and these quests will help you maintain your like get your objective but then mm -hmm. sometimes like you might not want to do that because you just want to build this other story even if it's not getting you what you need and it is just so much fun yeah the story is more important than winning it <laughs> is it is it's so good all right, so my number 29 is Stone Age. I'm a sucker for worker placement games, and I love this kind of the take this take on uh, worker placement where you can put more than one guy in a, in a section. And on top of that, you know, you roll the dice per person that you have there, per worker that you have, and, you know, you're going to get more resources based off of what your die rolls are. You get these axes that help you kind of mitigate those die rolls. You can get more people. You can, you can learn agriculture. Um, it's just uh, a great worker placement game, and it actually plays pretty quick, too. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I said yeah. I've never played it. <laughs> anyway. Say, like, <laughs> you know about this one? Like, I've never played it with you. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, my number 28 is Power Grid. And this game was... So this was the first game that I played that made me realize there are games out there. My brother had brought it over or something and was playing it. This was like... Were we even dating? I, I was dating you, but you weren't dating me yet. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds right. Um, For more details, like, <laughs> ask us in the comments. <laughs> so, yeah, but uh, he brought it over, and I just remember how it built up your resource management while you're trying to power um, all these different cities, and you're all competing, but you're also wanting to get the best cards, but it spends money to get the cards to power more plants, and you need to save that money to buy the resources to power the plants. I was, like, blown away. I didn't even know such a thing existed, and it was so much fun. All right, so uh, my number 28 is not a game that is on here because it's fun. What? It's a game that's on here because it's important, I think. Okay. Okay. So Freedom, the Underground Railroad. This is a game. It's got a lot of things that I love. It's got... It's a cooperative game. Yep. You're all working together as a group. It is, you know, it's really heavy. It's a heavy game. It's a oh, yeah. challenging game it's with a really tough win ratio. Um, and it's educational, which is cool, too. But it's more than just educational. Um, it's It immerses you in this, in this really rough situation of, of seeing the plight of people who were in slavery and trying to free them. Now, I... <laughs> This is not a game that I or a topic that I would encourage people to gamify. Make games about yeah. slavery. Yeah. It's not. So I don't want to encourage that, and I don't want to make light of that in any way, shape, or form. That being said, this game is powerful. It is, yeah. You just feel so much emotions. You're like, oh, oh my gosh! Every person that gets caught by the slave catchers, even right now, I'm like getting like I... like choked up about it, like thinking about that. 
so this is not a game that I that, that I it's like it's a game you know it's more like this is an experience and this is a, a lesson that hopefully people learn this is not something to repeat this is not a part of our history that that uh, that uh, um, should be allowed <laughs> you know and so um, for that reason not necessarily because the game the game is strong it's a really solid game and there is you know that cooperative nature of it is just really really interesting and that but having to raise the funds all the historical accuracy that's in the cards and these real life heroes of the underground railroad um, seeing those and being able to read the, the, the flavor text this is one of the few games that I read all the flavor text because I yeah. want to learn about those characters that are those people that are real people that really made a difference um, so not because of the game necessarily because the game is really solid but because of the, the the taking a tough topic making people understand that maybe haven't had to experience anything like it so yeah <laughs> so, all right freedom underground railroad my number 28 changing directions here my number 27 was actually ryan's 30 and this is sherlock holmes consulting detective um, one thing that I wanted before I talk about it, this game has been like awesome to play in this time. <laughs> we've been, um, there's a, a f friends of ours, a couple friends of ours that we've been playing this with. And it's been so much fun because they can play at their house. We can play at our house and we have the like, copies. And so we can like do that. So basically Sherlock Holmes consulting detective is you are solving these mysteries and you have newspapers and then you have a directory of people that you can question. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. So you're looking through all the newspapers. You're looking at, you know, the crime scene or whatever and trying to figure out who to talk to. And you're trying to do it in um, as many steps as Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Every extra step you take hurts your score. But then there's, like, sub things that you can um, solve to help your score. And it is just, like, yes. Yeah, it's just excited. It's my number 30. Uh, for the, all those reasons, it is just, it's a really good time. And you know you're going to beat by Sherlock. He, like... That's not true. We had a perfect game. We just didn't answer, we didn't answer any of the extra things. Remember? That's true. But the yeah. point is, he's, like, going to, like... I felt awesome about Find that. some weird ash of some weird ta tobacco and... Uh, know the right exact right person to ask about that and you're but that's gonna... all in there they're in the directory <laughs> it's not like you can't go there yeah but he does it in like three steps and then we're like but we did it that one game we, we did it in okay, exactly one game okay. we played like us like several games and we go on these rabbit trails of like well let's find out where you know who's good at taxidermying lions <laughs> and, just, <laughs> and just like this and, but there's also usually questions involving those rabbit trails yeah. like so you get extra credit points for yeah it's awesome all right my number 27 um is actually higher on your list so i'm not allowed to talk about it yet yeah i'll talk about it later i'll be quiet about it i won't make any noise <laughs> that's good one. okay fine i gotta i gotta pun him <laughs> <laughs> all right so my number twi 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 20 26 Six. is photosynthesis this game is really beautiful you are growing your trees up and then you're you are getting points by how the sun is attached to it but then also you don't get points if somebody else's tree is casting a shade on your tree and then eventually when they're full grown then they die and you get um points for that as well and this game is so beautiful and so mean that i love it <laughs> yeah uh i like it too it's pretty my number 26 is a two-player game. It's called Watergate. Uh, it's based off of the whole the Nixon um, Watergate scandals. And um, you're trying to pin all this evidence, you know, to trying to literally tie through a kind of like a, I don't know, like one of those like strings on uh, thumbnails, kind of thumbtacks kind of thing. Like, yeah, sure. I, I don't know how to describe a that. A conspiracy board. Yeah, conspiracy board. You're trying yeah. to tie evidence <laughs> to, to Nixon and his campaign, um, but, or in, in his, in his, uh, administration, but, um, the, the administration's trying to, try to block those, you know, those ways of, of block tying evidence to him. And, oh, it's just really nice tension back and forth. And, you know, well, uh, you're, I'm almost connected. Oh, I'm gonna block that path. Oh, you know, I'm gonna get you from this. Side. Oh, I'm gonna block that path. But then I'm gonna reopen this other path. Um, it's, a, a, you know, no politics involved at all. You can do it apolitically, just as a game of trying to complete your objectives, and it's really, really fun. Um, my number twenty-five is Harry Potter Hogwarts Battle. 
This is a deck builder game and you can, it's kind of exploratory when you first start it because there's the seven, um, seven books that go along with like the seven years at Hogwarts. And so as soon as you beat a year, it's a cooperative deck building game. When you beat a year, you can open up the next book and then you get new goodies and new stuff. And I just, it, it was decent mechanics. It was a really decent deck builder. And then it had an IP I loved, pasted on it. And I really liked that. It was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it. It can, um, overstay its welcome occasionally and um, when we played two player it's too easy so we have to play each of us have to play two people when we're playing mm -hmm. um so with those two caveats it's a blast yeah it's uh yeah, the theme makes it really nice and also you know as things get tougher and tougher you also get more and more goodies yes. with it so kind of yeah. everything just kind of ramps up yeah which is really why nice. it can go a bit longer sometimes yeah all right so my number 35 this is the 25 Oh, what I say? Thirty-five. My number twenty-five is Lords of Waterdeep. I said I was a sucker for uh, worker placement games, and this is another really strong worker placement game. Um, it's got great bits to it. The board is fantastic. It has that tie into the D and D world as well. That's um, a kind of a way to get people who are who are RPGers to get a, you know bring them into a, a, a board game that they might enjoy. Um, so it's a really strong mechanics, great bits, a good theme behind it. Um, and gosh darn it, it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number 24 is another cooperative game. It is Flashpoint Fire Rescue. This is where you all play as firefighters and you're trying to go across the board, putting out fires, but also rescuing people. And you are limited by like what you can do because there's you can you can lose by not rescuing enough people or you could also lose by the building collapsing because of the walls and um becoming weaker and it's it's really fun and i like the win ratio on this um it's probably probably 50 50 for us so i like to lose a little bit more than that and you can ramp up there's ways to make it yeah. more challenging and additional maps yeah and different things. but i mean for there's so little in the game i guess like just that and then the additional player powers that there's so little in it but it's just like stressful like the fun stress that i like all right so my number 24 is bethany's number 46 which is point salad uh point salad this is that kind of uh card drafting game you're drafting salad and greens trying to make the best salad possible but you're also drafting scoring um parameters so you might have a card that says you get three points per tomato so you can try to get a bunch of tomatoes but you also have a card that says two points per tomatoes, but one point negative for onions or whatever yeah. it is. So you're trying to get the perfect mix of, of scoring cards and ingredients, trying to block other people from getting the ingredients they want. Um, it goes by really, really fast. It plays anywhere from two to six players, and it all bounces out pretty well. Um, it, it, it is silly, and it is fun, um, and I can get pretty much anybody to play this with me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is one of the games that you can get non-gamers to play easily um my number 23 was ryan's 27 and that is clink a deck building adventure yeah you want to talk about it yeah i will i just i didn't know if you're going to say anything after i said Dean. Clink yes. building adventure yeah but this is <laughs> <laughs> this is another um deck builder but you're also uh, trying to go through this um map dungeon Dungeon. Oh my gosh. You're going Cave, it's a it's castle. a dungeon crawl, so you're trying to go further in to get stuff, but you're also putting Clink in there because there's a, a dragon in there and if you wake him up and or wake her up, then she's gonna come get you. So you wanna go get stuff, but the further in you go, the more clink is in there, so the no, more noise you're making. But all the good stuff's at the bottom, or you can just go in and go out. I hope everybody else dies. It's fun. I like it. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that that kind of that uh, push your luck mechanism built oh, into yeah. a deck builder. And this is the first time I think I, I at least saw a deck builder combined with a board. Yeah. At least successful. There were some other ones that did it probably before. But had to have a deck builder that also had a board that also had this kind of extra elements of that push your luck and that competition. And how greedy do you want to get before you think that you might not be able to carry all that treasure back up to the surface? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and plus, you're just making all this noise thematically. It just makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah. And this is another one that kind of is able to get um, RPGers to the, to the table to play a board game, in our experience. Yeah. All right, so my number 23 is Puerto Rico. Did I say that like, extra, like, spicy, like, Puerto, Puerto Rico. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Puerto Rico, <laughs> like us Midwesterners say. <laughs> it, it is a... Um, 
it's an action selection kind of a game, like a role selection, I guess. But it's it was the first game, or at least one of the first games, that did something like you take an action, but then everybody else gets this, that same action on a smaller scale. So maybe like I'm going to ship my goods first and get extra points for it, and then afterwards everyone else also gets to ship their goods. Or I'm going to build a building and I get a discount and I get to choose first, but everyone else also gets to build a building, but just without a discount. So you uh, have you know you're shipping goods, you are building buildings, you're getting points from a variety of different ways. Um, and it is... And the uh, expansion's fun, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. As in the forests and the nobles. <laughs> so, yeah, Puerto Rico, we have a good time with that one. It plays three to five. There is a, actually a decent two-player variant that works as well. Oh, it's really good. Yeah. It's like it, it, you get the same feel when you play two-player with the variant than you do with a higher player count. Which usually is not how that works. No. <laughs> usually two-player <laughs> no. involves like some kind of weird AI thing or... Yeah, that's not how... Yeah. Drastically changing the rules. But no, the... Yeah. That's good. We recommend it. Um, my number 22 is Luna. This is a Stefan Feld game. Um, and you are the, the priestess is basically retiring, right? Mm -hmm. The priestess is retiring and you are trying to bid to take her place by doing different things, um, on these islands. So you have to travel to these different islands to do things like build altars, um, that's the only thing I can remember. You're recruiting more, you know, more oh, people. Oh, more people, yeah. You're recruiting, you're going to the temple, you're going, you're uh, going on the council of priests. It's, basically, it's a worker, it's a point salad style game, not to be yeah. confused with point, point salad. salad. <laughs> well, like the Stefan Feld, so you would, you would just assume that it was going to be point salad, but it's really neat of what it looks like when it's on the table, because instead of like this huge board, it's all these individual islands, so these little small pieces, and then the middle board where you can take things from and you can put your pieces on, um, but yeah, so it's, it looks really neat when it's set up as you're traveling to these different parts that aren't connected. So I, yeah. I just really like the draw of that. Yeah, each island has its own kind of action tied to it. So exactly. you have to travel to action to that island in order to do that action. And but it also, you have, to, you have you to have an action to be able to travel to anywhere. Yeah. You have to okay. plan ahead. This is a plan ahead kind of a game. Mm -hmm. You can't go in there without a strategy. This is a game I routinely get second place in. But <laughs> it's fine. Not when, you know, two player two. But I'm talking higher player count as well. Yeah. <laughs> Not just two player. All right, so my number 22 is uh, Bethany's number 37, which was Architects of the West Kingdom. Um, man, that whole uh, kind of West Kingdom, North Sea, all that series of games from Renegade Games has been um, just yeah, really just choice. <laughs> choice. Um, again, work replacement because work replacement. <laughs> Hashtag work replacement. Um, and uh, this just does a really, it just flows so well. You place guys, get goods. Place guys, get goods. Scoop some guys up. Place guys, get goods. It just kind of just keeps on going. There's no um, rounds where you have to stop and do some kind of a cleanup mechanism to it. Yeah. Um, there's this really kind of fun thing where you get to put people in jail, your opponents people in jail. Uh, yeah, fun. <laughs> Watch our review of that, this game. <laughs> you liked it too. I guess it might be on your list somewhere. Yeah, yeah it was. It was. On 37. <laughs> 37. You liked it. Don't lie. But yeah, fun putting people in jail. Yeah, super fun. Well, don't go to the black market. Don't do illegal things. You don't have to go to jail. I wasn't. You were just taking them when they were powerful. Yeah, that's true. So uh, yeah, my number twenty-two, Architects of the West Kingdom. I could have put any other number of those games from that series in this spot, but this is a uh, this is a good one. My number 21 was Ryan's 44, and that is Cottage Garden. So this is a tile drafting game? Yes. Yeah, yeah a tile drafting game. It's so simple and relaxing. You're trying to get, like, fill up your, um, is it a 5x5 five five grid? Six, yeah, by six by six. Six grid. So you're trying to fill up your grid with these tiles, and if you place your tiles over certain things, you get... Um, certain things that happen and if you get certain tiles on there like the little what are those things with the plants like the Just beauty and the beast thing <laughs> Clo clove Clo clovis Clo um clavis basically things happen and it's you, really this is like the worst review you've ever <laughs> given if you do things then things other other things will happen <laughs> Yeah, but the thing that's <laughs> neat about this game is is the grid of it. So where this it's a tracker going around the grid where all the tiles are, and depending on where the tracker is, you are limited to choosing from that 
from that section. And it's interesting with how it gets replaced. So you can try to plan ahead to get something so things will get replaced so you can get something else or block somebody from something by grabbing something, knowing that when it's their turn, it's gonna intersect in that same way to where they won't be able to get that. They would have to get something else. So I really like how that works and how the, the drafting even happens in that. All right, so you know how when I talked about Century Spice Road last time you wanted to play right away? Mm -hmm. You talking about Cottage Garden makes me want to play Cottage Garden after this. Even with my terrible explanation? Yeah, well, it's fine. Despite that? <laughs> yeah, see <laughs> yeah, our review for more details. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we should just say that about everything. Yeah. So my number 21 is Pandemic Legacy Season 2. Um, man. This is a, the campaign style game, again, full cooperative, where you're going through it and there's this legacy deck. You come to certain points in the game and it tells you to flip something over. You get introduced to new characters, new sections of the board, new mechanisms, um, new threats to the board. Yeah. It's, you know, I won't spoil anything for you, but there's just, it's just really interesting the way you kind of just discover the board. Yeah, the and it's still kind of Yeah, and it has kind of still that vibe of, um, regular pandemic where you're trying to have a set collection part of it where you have to collect a certain amount of cards to cash them in for building this thing or that thing. Yeah. Um, there's all these different objectives and the objectives are always changing. So every time you play, it's a different game you're playing. It's You play it over 12 months, not like literal months, but 12 like scenarios. Sessions, yeah. yeah. And if you uh, win the first one, great. You go on to the next month. If you lose, you have one more chance to beat it before you just straight up lose it. Yeah, so you got 12 to 24 games in it. I think we played around 20 or 21 matches, something like that. We were that bad? We were pretty bad at this one. We had to have a lot of cohesion in our group. Yes, we did. <laughs> I felt like Matt he had a whole different plan Matt for the, than the rest of us. That's, <laughs> That's I don't remember that. <laughs> No, but uh, let's surprise my tomorrow, 21. But Matt also wants to, like, bonfire this game. Like, giving it a Viking like, funeral yeah. type of, like, <laughs> passing it on. Supposedly, you can play it beyond, you know, give, you can, now you have a custom pandemic board that you can use or whatever. Why? No one's ever going to... Uh, you, you had this great experience, and now it's over. And no one's going to go... I, I honestly shouldn't say no one, but I have a feeling that not a lot of people are going back and playing this as the final board state over and over again. I agree. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. We have two more sections coming up. Set, set, things. We have two more things. That's like a word of the day. Things. <laughs> there, there are things that, that we... <laughs> things that... Mistake. Uh, all I know is we've got two more of these episodes that yes, are... Yes, that's before, the one. <laughs> that's it. That's it. I went for a two-hour walk today with my children, so... Yeah. I'm excused of everything. All right, there you go. Yeah. And uh, you know what? We've had some really positive uh, feedback. Um, so we kind of like making these lists, too, in addition to you guys liking them. So um, we're going to keep on reviewing games individually. But, yeah, we're making some more lists after the uh, we finish our top 50. It's been a lot of fun. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube under Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews to see our reviews as they come out and our extra videos as they come out. You can follow us on Facebook under Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. You can also follow us on Instagram under Ryan and Bethany, and you can chat with us on Twitter under Ryan and Bethany One. If there's any uh, lists that you guys would like to see, or if there's any games that in our lists that you would uh, put on your own lists, or any games that you just can't stand that we put on our list, let us know in the comments below. We'd love hearing from everybody. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.